grab it here. Well, it's time to do the um, power up of the servers and um, restore them to their factory settings. But I think I'll show it only on one server because the, basically it'll be the same procedure for the other server. So let's get into it. Okay, the first thing to do is to get things connected and um, let me just show this one first. Uh, this is the um, VGA to HDMI converter and it actually does the exact thing so it takes the signal from the VGA and makes it into an HDMI signal. There's lots of physical adapters that convert VGA into HDMI like basically you want to convert the HDMI signal into VGA but not the <laughs> so you have to be careful when you're buying this that you buy um, for example this module here because this is the one that does the, the correct conversion. So we um, put this one in place and then it, it's powered by USB so we in this case <laughs> not from the network but from the USB and I'll just plug in the HDMI and the HDMI I'm going to actually use to record um, the, um, the screen and then for um, uh, remote, remote control um, on a very low level we're going to use the ILO function so you need to look for the ILO port which is a basic it's a network port um, that connects to the network but has nothing to do with the operating system that you may or I will have later on the machine so it's a completely independent sub processor so the nice thing about the ILO is that you can actually you can access the ILO even if the server is off or in standby. So, and um, experience has shown that the server will actually switch itself on into boot mode as soon as I insert the power. So. And, uh, then we'll just move to the um, to the screen side screen recording. Uh, but anyway, in addition to to the adapter, then you need the uh, keyboard, a uh, standard USB keyboard. So I'm going to plug this in the front. to the screen recording because and then I'll be talking you through the, because then basically we just work with the computer against this so uh, doing um, returning it to factory defaults work. Okay. plugged in the power cable it didn't automatically stop so um, I actually had to press the on button so that's the first time that, that has happened it's actually what I would expect to happen it is the very first time where I've actually had to press the on button to um, get it to come on after I put the power cable in.
want to go into the array configuration. Keep on waiting. so much on the case. F9. Yes, we got in. Good. And then, I mean, you could look at all the configurations um, for the server here. You can see the memories, you can see the process, but actually it's easier to do in the ILO later. So, my only, uh, well, the only thing I'm going to do here is to um, system default options. Restore default system. Yes, restore, and then it'll, re it'll restore all the BIOS settings to my factory defaults and reboot. And now uh, the next attempt is to try and hit the correct function um, button for the ILO configuration. Configure the fans to max performance, or whatever the default is. This ILO IP address is probably a hard-coded IP address in the ILO configuration. Next time you do it up a little faster because this time it's actually reconfiguring everything else because we told it to reset the BIOS configuration. Now we need to wait for the ILO. Hopefully hit the right function button at the right time.
you want to get into the ILO 4.4 settings and you want to use this menu option, which is to set defaults. That will reset the ILO environment back to factory defaults. And will wipe out all the custom configurations made by the when it was the servo was lost in use. I mean, data centers they usually have a dedicated ILO network, which may possibly a whole load of static IP addresses, and, and then other restrictions and stuff. The next step is that we want to come back into this ILO utility and um, change the default password or change the password on the um, administrator user. Might be that we'll have to use control del to get back to the or force it to do it. Total reboot. Yeah, so control out there. Start the process more from the beginning, and then we should be able to get the ILO um, or get access to the ILO configuration again. a bit wondering about that IP address. Yeah, now it came. See? 192, 168, 1, 107. So that's the more like because that, that's the sub that I use, private sub. -net. So now I think that it's applied the settings to the uh, IPO or ILO either things. Maybe it does when you reboot, but applies the um, or resets the phone. Usually they run in data centers they run the ILO with fixed uh, IP addresses on a dedicated subnet on a dedicated separate network. So if their main Ethernet switching system network goes stops working then um, they can still access all the servers. the administrator user and then you want to um, change this or set set a known password. I think it um, on a label on top of the server there's usually the default um, ILO username password and the username is administrator and then the password is a number. But um, I'm not sure if you do a reset to factory defaults if it returns that password to the ILO or not. So my policy has been to go, come in here and put my own password.
So now it'll just end up in an endless, like it'll try and um, reboot. I used to do is I stick it into the... Oh, come on. Oh, I didn't make it. Usually I make it go into the BIOS and I just leave it here because if you were, you're working in ILO, if, if the whole server's not powered up, you basically can't see much. So because I haven't got any disk or anything, I just leave it in the BIOS. So I can just sit here. Because now we're done to that part. So... Put the server keyboard away for the time being. Now we're going to see if we can see if ILO will work. Okay, now if everything has gone well, you will end up with a machine in your network list with the name that's on the sticker related to the ILO. And um, then you just need to you just double click on it and then you get into a web page. So then you'll end up with this in in the browser. Or something equivalent. So you have it's not SSL protected the the web um, traffic, so you have to actually go and um, to the bombs and then proceed to the web like the web page anyway. You should be able to put in Um, the, the good thing about this environment is that it's always accessible whether the, uh, the server is actually, as long as the server um, has a, a power supply connected to a power outlet, then this environment will work. Now the only thing that doesn't work is that it will show if the server is not actually running, if the um, motherboard isn't powered up and stuff, then it will show less data. But, um, and then this has a little bit of a licensing thing that if you want to have advanced features like advanced remote access features through the ILO process then you need to have a license but I've heard that those licenses you can get on um, on seller sites relatively cheaply so there was actually one guy I picked them up um, and even as a private person just to add to the system so they can get access to those advanced features I might actually try, we'll see if I try and make a video. But the main um, area that I'm now in, interested in is um, it's basically this area. So that one can see the, the, yeah, a quick rundown of, um, of, of what's, what's there, what's not there. So everything looks okay. Um, yeah, I mean I haven't got a second power supply, it wasn't included, or it's never been installed. Power supplies you can get very cheap for these units. So, I mean, if I wanted to make it a, red, uh, a unit with a redundant power supply, it wouldn't be a, really a big issue. And uh, agent mismanagement service, I actually don't know what that is. And um, this, uh, the rest of it is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, it tells the status of the phone. This is actually nice. It's got a pretty good detailed um, visualization. Um, of the um, temperature field actually makes a graph or from the back oh, you can turn it around so you have a back view
power seems okay. And then here you can just look at like what processes you have. Um, what's the memory configuration look like? You know, and status on the individual, very detailed on the memory, what type of memory is installed. Networking interfaces, you know, like what's the status of the ILO interface and, and the other four interfaces. Now these are the interfaces that are going to be used by the operating system. So it's a bit unclear, but I, it's, if you read the manual, there seems to be some, in some configurations, you can actually uh, share the ILO um, network interface with the operating system. But um, as far as I'm understanding, in most normal scenarios, it's um, ILO uses the, its own dedicated network interface. are installed and then the actual storage because I haven't got any hard drives this really <laughs> not not much but you can see the uh, logical arrangement so it's got uh, basically two storage it divides the front storage area into two story separate storage boxes or you know logical groups And then you can see all the um, uh, temperature. You know, what are the what, what are the readings now, and what are the settings for critical caution? And there's a lot of temperature sensors in this unit. That's true. <laughs> um, is there anything else to say? As I said, ILO is now available, so you can just um, you can carve the server off to some remote location and you can still access the uh, ILO services which is good and it's not dependent on whether the op if you install like an operator and we'll do that later when we install the operating system you can actually install ILO support on the operating system and it's more information into this environment so if you are running an operating system and then you you come in with this interface you know, as I understand it then you have more um, more information available Oh, I hope you found that informative. Um, please consider subscribing. Hit the like button. Um, merch is available, or if you'd just like to buy me a cup of coffee, links are in the descriptions. Description, and um, I'll see you in the next one.